So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI video. In today's video, I'm going to give you my top six tips on things that you should do on every Power BI report you produce. So it's easier for you and the consumers of your report to use and understand, okay? My first tip, it is to create a summary page of the entire report. And for example, here I have this report I created for the FIFA World Cup. And the first page is just a summary page that will introduce you to what the contents of the report are. You don't have to go through every tab to actually see what is it about. You can see it on the first report, okay? And this leads me to tip number two. And in tip number two is create a navigation, at least for the first page. I know that you can navigate Power BI reports with the tabs here. That's fine. That is perfect. You can hide them also if you want. Don't, they don't hurt. But at least have the navigation on the first page. Why? Let me tell you. If you have the navigation on the first page, you are again helping the users understand what the report is about very, very quickly. So here you have the FIFA World Cup, and then you see standings, players, matches, and knockout. That's what the report contains. You don't have to go through every tab to understand it. This is it. This is what you're going to get, okay? It helps frame everything. Now, you don't need to have a navigation on each page. In this case, for example, I don't. I have here, if you go to standings, the page for standings, you'll see that the navigation disappear. And that's fine, but I think it's important to have it at least on the first page so, again, it's easier to understand. But that leads me to tip number three. In tip number three, if you are not going to have, and even if you have, a navigation on each page, it's actually good practice to have a home button. So you can go to that first page very, very, very quickly. There are other elements on the home page that we will talk about, and that's why it's useful to have the home button. So you can very, very quickly go from page to page. And even if you don't have the navigation on every page, like I don't have here, I can still very quickly go and find my home page. Okay. Another one that I think is very important and for example, if you publish your reports to powerbi.com, you have here reset to default. So it will reset all the filters, but not all your users know that. And I bet that a lot of them do not. So I think it's very, very useful to have a reset filters button. And this Power BI report, the one that I'm showing you, it, it is made for exploration. Which country is playing where? How much is this country winning or losing? How many goals? Which position? So you're asking questions and it's going to help you find everything you want about that specific team. Which means that it's especially important to have a reset filters because once you've done in the rabbit hole for Spain, maybe you go to go up and go to, I don't know, Canada, whatever it is, right? So for this report, it's very important to have a reset filter. But what I find with other reports is that more often than not, you look at the data and you say, something is wrong. And more often than not, it's because there is a filter applied somewhere that got saved. So if you see some data that looks weird, you can actually, the user can play, you know, press reset filters, and at least they know that what they are seeing is not because something is being filtered in the background. Okay, so I think it's very useful to have it. If your users know that this button exists and all your reports are up there, then you don't need it. But otherwise, it's a good practice. Now, two more. Let's go home. One of the things that I think is very important to have on each report is when was the last time this report was refreshed? Again, if you're creating an app, you will see that because that information is in there, but it's not very discoverable. It's not very easy to see. So I think it's nice to, at least in the home page, if you decide to have one, to put when the last time it was refreshed. And if you work for a large organization that you can have multiple sources for the same data, to put also, what is the data source? You can say, oh, this comes directly from SAP, or this comes from the Excel, whatever, filter, whatever somebody did, okay? Very, very useful. And again, you can put it on every page, 
or you can just put it on the home page. And that's why I think it's good to have a home button so you can always go back and say, okay, when was this last refresh? And my last tip for the day, it is who should I contact if I have questions about the report? Now, this is a report I made for you guys as a tutorial for learning. So I just have a link to the YouTube channel so you can recreate it. But here, instead of having follow the steps on our YouTube channel, is if you have questions, contact mm, X or contact the email IT service, email department or whatever you want. I know that if you publish this as an app, there is a possibility to actually see who the owner of the report is. But again, it's not very easy to see. So I think that it should be easy and so clear on the report. I have a video where I show you how you can put like an email icon that you can click and then get to, you know, send an email to that person. I will post a link down below. Do that. I mean, it takes like two pixels, two pixels. So it is worth to have. And if somebody comes in the report and has questions, they can get answered very, very quickly instead of having to run through the entire IT marketing department to find who did that, okay? So those are my top tips for reports. Now, I am really curious, what are the things that you do on all the reports? How about you let us know so maybe we can implement it in our routine too. So this is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, subscribe and like, and I will see you again on Friday with the Tax Fridays video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.